Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Ingersoll, and I'm a writer and a novelist from Toledo, Ohio. For over 20 years, I've been writing novels and nonfiction. And about um, five years ago, I wrote a novel called The Lace Makers. It came to me in a way that I, um, I hadn't experienced before when I had written books. Uh, in the winter of 2014, we had a terrible winter here in Toledo and lots of snow and lots of storms. And in between each one, I would venture out to the library just to get new books or things to read and enjoy. And for some reason, my heart and my spirit were guided toward the Civil War and then uh, a few weeks later to the Holocaust. And I found myself delving into biographies and autobiographies and um, firsthand accounts of life during those time periods. And I did not really understand why I was researching these. It was a very depressing winter and I found it very difficult to look at these two topics. But for some reason, I voraciously devoured that information. Um, the following summer, around this time of the year, I was out in the garden right outside my windows here and I realized that there was a novel that was going to come from all of this research. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know what, but I trusted the process. So I let go of the research for a little while and I just kind of went through my life and taught yoga and wrote blogs. And then all of a sudden, this idea came that I would write a story about two women, two young women that lived through these time periods. And as that story evolved, I realized that it was only going to be on one day of their lives. And I thought, which day? And someone gave me the inspiration that it would be the last day of their incarceration. So for the character in the Civil War, it would be the very last day before her emancipation. For the character who was in a concentration camp, it would be the last day before the camp was liberated. And I felt very um, uncomfortable with knowing enough about that topic. So with that in mind, with those characters in mind, I decided to do more research. And I spent the next six months really fine tuning uh, my awareness and my knowledge of those time periods from the clothing and the food they ate to the societal norms, to the language, to the, even the moon phases on that day. I researched all of that. And still the characters hadn't spoken to me yet. Um, as a writer, I wait to hear the voices of the characters. And the first one that came to me was Emerald. And she's the eight-year-old girl living on a plantation in Tennessee. And then about a month later, I heard Karen's voice. And Karen is uh, a German Christian girl who's incarcerated. Her family was incarcerated for harboring a Jewish family in their theater and they were caught and imprisoned. But Karen does not speak outwardly in the novel. She speaks inwardly. And so listening to her and finding her voice was difficult. So I found it very helpful to go back to the research that I drew from. And so now I'm in the process of uh, preparing the lace makers for republication. I self-published it in 15 uh, and I'm reformatting it. It will be available on amazon.com in a little bit. But for right now, what I'd like to do is share some passages from the research that I did. Uh, and so for the next week or so, I'll be sharing videos of other people's incredible work that inspired me along the way when I was writing The Lace Makers. The first book actually was a book that I found on my grandfather's shelf when I was very young. And when he passed away, my sister got his original copy, but I went out and I bought a copy and it's called Light from Many Lamps, A Treasury of Inspiration um, by Lillian Eichler Watson. And I'll put the information um, for this book in the, in the notes below, so in case you'd like to read it. What I'd like to start with is the prayer of St. Francis, because I believe that as a writer, um, as a creative um, writer, it's, uh, my purpose is to bring light to the world through uh, my insp inspired um, works. I don't feel that I write this these works by myself. I feel like they come through me. And I just love the prayer of St. Francis. So let me start with that. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. 
Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not, may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And uh, so as I... As I look at the lace makers again, I find that uh, given what has been happening in the five years since I wrote it, our culture and our world have gone through incredible crisis. We are in a chaos cycle now um, with everything that's happening with the pandemic, with the George Floyd incident, um, with the demonstrations, with the awareness that is rising. And even my own awareness is evolving as I try to understand more fully an experience that I cannot know. Um, when I was writing the Civil War piece of the Lace Makers, it was very difficult for me to understand the experience of an African-American slave because obviously I'm, I'm not an African-American, I've never been a slave. But to allow that process to come through me and through the education of what I um, learned through the, through the research, it helped me to have compassion and understanding and to know that I can never know that experience, but I can always listen and I can understand and I can express um, a kindness to others. And so the next pa uh, passage that I'm going to read is a very short one. Um, the quote that is included in this passage, there's no author connected to it, but um, Lillian Watson explains it just a little bit here. It says, let me not neglect any kindness, for I shall not pass this way again. The power of inspiration is mighty and mysterious. For more than a century, a brief quotation has been making the rounds, repeated over and over again in print and widely spread by word of mouth. No one knows who originally wrote it or said it, though it has been variously attributed to Victor Hugo, to George Eliot, to a Quaker missionary named Stephen Grellet, and to others. No one knows when it was said, why it was said, or how it came to take such firm hold of the world's heart and mind. But take hold it did, impelling untold numbers of people to be kinder and more considerate to their fellow creatures. It remains as fresh and vital as ever, a familiar little gem of inspiration. And it goes thus. I shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. It is astonishing how this brief quotation, the words of some unspirited unknown of a century or more ago, has endured, steadily increasing in influence and popularity. It crops up over and over again in books, magazines, newspapers, has been the subject of innumerable sermons and lectures, is frequently quoted in plays and on radio and television programs. It has proudly hung on the walls of thousands of homes and offices and has traveled to far places of the world, translated into many different languages. I shall pass through this world but once, it was the favorite quotation of George V of England. He copied it in his own hand and kept it framed on his writing desk. Any kindness I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Dale Carnegie calls it one of the basic requirements for happiness in life. Cut out this quotation and put it where you will see it every morning, he urges his readers. It is a reminder to all of us that we, can, we do not live for ourselves alone that we must do what we can to help others, to lighten a burden or soften a grief whenever the need arises, for we shall not pass this way again. And so in the, the weeks to come, I'll be sharing more inspiration of how we as a global whole can help each other in our own way, in whatever way manifests for us.
to show a kindness every day, for we shall never live this day again. I look forward to sharing more of my work with you in the future, and I appreciate you sharing and liking this video with others. May we all do a kindness for each other today. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.